In the heart of the 19th century Paris, the Opera Garnier stood as a shining beacon of French splendor, opulence, and artistic grandeur. It was not only an architectural marvel, but also unparalleled in its cultural impact and significance. This majestic edifice adorned with marble and gold was a testament to the city's love for the arts and the thirst for beauty. Here, amid the grandeur and resplendence, it set the stage for one of the most perplexing, captivating and tragically beautiful love stories ever told, the Phantom of the Opera. In the very bowels of this hallowed institution, nestled within the labyrinthine network of catacombs that spread like veins beneath the opera house, we find Eric. Eric, a virtuoso musician of unmatched talent, a master of his craft, haunted by a life in the gloomiest corners of the world, shrouded in anonymity and shunned by society. His physical disfigurement, a cruel twist of fate, had forced him to live like a spectre in the catacombs, a dark abyss, far removed from the dazzling lights of the stage above. His heart, however, was an inferno of passion and longing. It bore the heavy burden of a love that could not be reciprocated, a love for the young, naive, and enchantingly beautiful soprano, Christine Daae. Eric's affection for Christine was profound, pure, and overwhelming, consumed him, his thoughts, his dreams, his music, and his very being. As she ascended to stardom, her enchanting voice captivating the hearts of all who heard her, his isolation deepened, making the cold walls of the catacombs even more oppressive. The contrast between her radiant success and his forlorn existence was a stark reminder of the chasm that separated them. It fueled his longing, his yearning, his desperation, making him a prisoner of his own emotions. This strain, this tension between his fervor and his, threatened to unhinge him. It pushed him to the very brink of desperation, testing his sanity and his resolve. He was a man teetering on the edge, a tragic figure caught in a web of his own making. Destiny's cruel joke played out in the grand setting of the opera Garnier. As she ascends to stardom, his isolation deepens, pushing him to the brink of desperation. Before the grandeur of the opera Garnier, before the obsession and the desperation, there was a boy named Eric. This boy was not ordinary, for he was born with a disfigurement that marked him as an outcast within the confines of society's conventional beauty. Social exclusion was his constant companion, his face hidden from the world as if it was a shame to the creation itself. The constant desire for acceptance, for being part of something greater than himself, gnawed at his heart, leaving him in a state of perpetual yearning. In the harsh world where he was shunned and rejected, Eric discovered his salvation in the soothing notes of music. Music became his confidant, his secret sanctuary, where he could freely express his deepest thoughts and feelings, allowing his soul to sing out loud without any fear of judgment. The disenchanting melodies born from his solitude echoed through the deserted streets, weaving a haunting symphony that narrated the saga of his loneliness. As the boy matured, his music evolved with him, transforming from simplistic tunes to intricate compositions, from normal to the virtuosic, from touching the surface to diving into the profound depths. His music began to mirror his life, each note resonating with the searing pain of rejection the bittersweet symphony of solitude and the overwhelming desire for acceptance. Yet, the world was deaf to his symphony, its harsh realities unkind and unrelenting. His dream of acceptance seemed illusory and distant until he discovered the catacombs beneath the Opera Garnier. It was a secluded haven away from society's critical gaze, a hidden world where his music could find its true resonance, a place he could finally call home. His music morphed into his refuge within the darkness, his guiding light through the labyrinth underneath the majestic opera house. His life and music were destined to intertwine with a young soprano's dreams in an unexpected twist of fate, setting the course for a heart-wrenching tale of unrequited love. Little did he know, his melodies would soon intertwine with a young soprano's dreams, marking the beginning of a tragic tale of unrequited love.
In his desperate desire for Christine's affection, Eric employs his extraordinary musical prowess to control the happenings behind the curtains. This tragic man, Eric, skilled and gifted beyond belief, weaves his spell, meticulously planning his every move. With his heart yearning for Christine's affection, he takes advantage of his unique talent and uses it as a weapon, a force of influence and manipulation. He orchestrates the drama, pulling the invisible strings in the background, asserting his power and control over the unsuspecting players. Eric, our phantom, is a complex figure, both intriguing and terrifying. His mastery of music is not only a testament to his genius, but also a tool for his dark intentions. He uses it to command the Opera House, to create an illusion of power and control over its inhabitants. His music is his voice, his expression, a mirror into his tormented soul. However, this is not a tale of a misunderstood genius. Eric's intentions are not benign. As we delve deeper into the narrative, we see the Phantom's actions take a sinister turn. He becomes consumed by his obsession for Christine, his love turning into a dangerous fixation. It's no longer about the music, it is about possessing Christine, owning her love and loyalty. The climax of this obsession comes in the form of an abduction. Eric, once the unseen puppet master, steps out of the shadows and takes Christine away, hidden from the prying eyes of the world. His demand is simple but terrible. He wants Christine's love and loyalty, no matter the cost. The echoes of his ultimatum reverberate through the house, marking a dark shift in the narrative. His actions become a threat, a dangerous ultimatum. He's ready to shatter her dreams, to break her spirit if she denies him. It is here we see the despair of a man consumed by his unrequited love and the lengths he would go to attain what he desires, threatening to shatter her dreams if she denies him. As the grand chandelier illuminates the opera house, a new star emerges from the wings, Christine Daae, a young soprano of captivating beauty and matchless talent. Born to a humble family, she was introduced to the world of opera from an early age, her father being a violinist in the opera orchestra. Her childhood days were spent lurking in the mysterious shadows of the opera house, a place teeming with countless stories, intricate intrigues, and enchanting melodies. For young Christine, the opera house was a labyrinthine wonderland, full of mysteries and allure. Her journey into the world of opera was one of obscurity, a journey marked by her humble beginnings. Destiny, however, had other plans for this young talent. The day she crossed paths with a mysterious mentor, her life took an unforeseen turn. This mentor was none other than the enigmatic phantom a figure feared and admired in equal parts. The Phantom, captivated by her purity and raw talent, decided to take her under his wing. Seeing in her the potential to become the opera's brightest star, he vowed guide her, to mold her into the prima donna she was destined to be. Under the Phantom's careful tutelage, Christine's voice began to blossom. The opera house soon echoed with her ethereal melodies that danced through the air, enrapturing all those who were privy to her performances. Her voice was pure magic, an enchanting symphony that resonated with the very soul of the opera. From the shadows, she stepped into the limelight and ascended to the coveted status of the opera's prima donna. It was a role she was born to perform, a role she was to play. But as Christine basked in the glow of her newfound success, she remained blissfully unaware of the sinister plot brewing beneath the layers of applause and adoration. The Phantom, her mentor, her guide, was growing dangerously obsessed. His control over her career was just the beginning of a perilous game of power and possession. An ominous shadow was creeping over her triumphant ascension, setting the stage for a drama yet to unfold. As Christine basks in the glow of her newfound success, she remains oblivious to the Phantom's growing obsession. His control over her career is just the beginning of a dangerous game, setting the stage for the drama yet to unfold. Enter Raoul, Christine's childhood friend and now fiancé. He is a man of noble birth, with a courageous heart and unwavering determination. A sense of duty and love propels him forward, ready to face untold dangers in the name of saving the woman he loves. 
Alongside him stands Monsieur Raya, a detective renowned for his relentless pursuit of truth and justice. Raya, with his silvered hair and hawk-like eyes, is a figure that personifies the law, his very presence a beacon of hope in this grim tale. Their journey is not an easy one. The Opera House, an architectural marvel during the day, transforms into a labyrinth of ominous shadows and echoing silence under the cloak of darkness. Its vacant hallways and deserted corridors, filled with echoes of forgotten operas, become a haunting maze. It reveals an eerie underbelly that sends chills down the bravest of spines. Yet this is the path they must tread, the darkness they must conquer, all in pursuit of the elusive and enigmatic phantom. The phantom, a spectre of the night, has long haunted the opera house with his mysterious presence. His melodious voice and phantom-like existence have become intertwined with the soul of this place. Yet his enchanting allure hides a dangerous obsession that has now crossed the bounds of sanity. This obsession, targeted at the innocent Christine, has thrown her into a perilous situation. Their mission is twofold. First, to rescue the captive Christine, a damsel caught in this web of obsession and danger. Second, they aim to bring the elusive phantom to justice, to end his reign of fear and restore harmony to the Opera House. This mission, fraught with danger and uncertainty, takes them deep into the heart of the Opera House's eerie underbelly. Their mission, to rescue Christine and bring the elusive phantom to justice. As the curtain rises on the mesmerizing performance, a wave of unease sweeps over the audience. The anticipation just moments ago filled with mirth and joy is overshadowed by a peculiar sensation of dread, like a shadow creeping over a sunlit field. In the shadows, concealed from the prying eyes of spectators, the phantom, a figure wrapped in mystery and sorrow, is overcome by a desperate obsession. He is formulating a daring plan, a scheme that is as audacious as it is horrifying. His target, the innocent Christine, the star of the show, the belle of the opera house. As the spotlight, a bright beacon of attention, slowly pans across the stage, its soft glow seeks out the star performer, Christine, the radiant diva with a voice that captivates hearts and minds. But something is off. The audience experiences a collective shock, a gasp that echoes off the gilded walls of the Grand Opera House. The starlet Christina has vanished, disappeared without a trace. One moment she was there, the next she was not. The Grand Hall, once filled with laughter and applause, descends into a surreal chaos. Performers, once elegant and composed, now scramble in disarray. The audience, ever so elegant in their attire and demeanor, whispering in hushed undertones, their faces masked with concern. Their once sparkling excitement transforms into a chilling fear, a palpable confusion that spreads like wildfire. The phantom, hidden in the embrace of darkness, has made his daring move. He has successfully abducted Christine, whisking her away to his desolate lair. In the eerie silence of the phantom's lair, Christine stirs. Her eyes, heavy with fear and confusion, flutter open to the cold, unfeeling stone walls. The flickering candlelight casts dancing shadows that seem to mimic the chaos in her heart. She is alone with the haunting music of the phantom being her only solace. As she slowly takes in her unfamiliar surroundings, the stage is set for a dramatic confrontation. As the narrative unfolds, an epic confrontation is staged between two of our main characters, the enigmatic phantom and the dashing Raoul. The underlying tensions that have been slowly brewing between these two characters throughout the plot have now reached a fever pitch setting the stage for this climactic showdown. In the darkly lit theater, there is a palpable electricity in the air, a sense of anticipation that is at once thrilling and haunting. The phantom, shrouded in mystery and cloaked in darkness, stands at one end of the theater, his face a mask of steely determination. On the other end is Raoul, handsome and resolute, filled with a sense of duty and protectiveness towards Christine. Our heroine, Christine, is caught in the middle of this battle of wills, her heart torn between her loyalty to Raoul and her unspoken affection for the phantom. 
Each character is dealing with their own internal struggles, trapped in a whirlwind of emotions. Christine, the beautiful Chantos, is torn between duty and desire. Raoul, the noble Viscount, is torn between his love for Christine and his duty to protect her from the Phantom. And the Phantom, the disfigured maestro, is torn between his love for Christine and his desire to be accepted by society. The tension escalates, with the music reaching a crescendo, matching the heightened emotions of the characters. The audience is held captive, their hearts pounding in sync with the rhythm of the music. The stakes could not be any higher. The narrative has been building up to this moment, this pivotal confrontation that will determine the future of these characters. The silence that follows the music is deafening, indicating the importance of the moment. Each character takes a moment to collect themselves, preparing for the choices they are about to make. Christine is caught in the middle, her heart beating like a war drum. The decision she is about to make will not just determine her future, but also the future of the two men who love her. A heart-stopping moment where Christine must choose between her loyalty to Raoul and her unspoken love for the Phantom. In the aftermath of the heart-stopping face-off, we find Raoul, desperate to find Christine, embarking on a perilous expedition through the labyrinthine underbelly of the Opera House. His determination is not just palpable, but it seems to vibrate in the air around him. It is this potent force of will, driven by his deep, passionate love for Christine, that fuels his every step, every breath, and every heartbeat. He moves forward fearlessly, drawn to his quest like a moth to a flame. The camera becomes a silent observer to his journey, almost a companion, journeying through the eerie, shadow-filled passageways that make up the catacombs, a world that is so vastly different from the grandeur and luxury of the opera house above. The walls seem to close in, the air grows colder with every step, and the silence is amplified creating a chilling backdrop to his ordeal. Then, from the depths of this suffocating silence, comes a sound that shatters the tranquility. The echo of a phantom melody, a spectral tune that serves as a haunting reminder of the omnipresent phantom. This melody, seemingly innocent, carries with it an undercurrent of suspense, a foreboding of the that lurks in the shadows. Raoul's path is fraught with peril, as he encounters the Phantom's cunningly designed traps, each one more perilous and complex than the last, each threat escalating the tension. The traps are not only physical hurdles, but psychological ones too, designed to induce fear and doubt in the bravest of hearts. Yet, despite the escalating danger and the odds stacked against him, Raoul presses on. He propelled by an unwavering resolve, a courage born out of love and desperation, one can't help but wonder, will his love for Christine be strong enough to guide him through this maze of darkness and danger that lies ahead? Will it be the torch that lights his way? Or will it be the impetus that leads him to his doom? As we move to the next scene, the mystery that shrouds the Phantom looms larger, adding an extra layer of intrigue to this haunting and captivating love story. The suspense is such that it lingers leaving the viewer yearning for more as the screen fades to black. Now one wonders what secret does the Phantom hold that keeps him lurking in the shadows? The Phantom, a figure shrouded in mystery, a spectre caught between the realms of the living and the dead. Who is this elusive character that dwells in the obscurity and why does he choose to remain hidden? A question that leaves one pondering, yearning for answers. Could it be a story of unrequited love that has plunged him into the depths of despair? Or perhaps it's a past filled with agonizing sorrows and unmistakable wrongs that he seeks to correct? Could it be a tale of broken dreams and shattered hopes that dictates his actions? The Phantom, a character as enigmatic as the moonlit night, keeps us guessing, keeps us on our toes. The Phantom's secret might be a tale of love lost, a heart shattered by hands of fate, or maybe it is a story of revenge. A thirst for retribution against those who wronged him, who stripped him of his dignity and left him in the darkness to fester. Could it be a tragic past that keeps him buried in the shadows, fearful of the light? 
His secret could revolve around a lost love, a beloved snatched away too soon, leaving him in a state of eternal grief. Or maybe it is the guilt of a sin committed in a moment of desperate passion that haunts him, pushing him further into his self-imposed. It's a tale of redemption he seeks, a path to atonement for his past transgressions. Or could it be a pursuit for acceptance, a longing to be loved, to be seen, to be understood, to belong? These questions continue to baffle us, leaving us gripped by the allure of this mysterious character. Through every twist and turn, the phantom story continues to captivate us. It's a narrative sleek as silk, yet as complex as a spider's web. His tale is a labyrinth, a puzzle waiting to be solved, a riddle begging to be answered. What is it that has driven him to such desperate measures? a mystery that adds an extra layer of intrigue to this haunting love story. As we continue our journey through this labyrinth of passion and pain, we find ourselves at the brink of the Phantom's most breathtaking display. A performance, not just of the opera, but a raw portrayal of his soul, his love for Christine, laid bare for all to see. In the dark catacombs beneath the opera house, the Phantom readies himself, each movement revealing his longing. The dim labyrinth transforms into a magnificent stage, illuminated by countless candles, casting a mesmerizing light upon the Phantom's mask. The performance commences, a symphony of fervor and despair resonating through the opera house. His voice, a chilling melody, fills the air, echoing his raw emotion. The grandeur of the performance is awe-inspiring, his love for Christine tangible in every note, and there in the audience we find Christine. Her eyes, wide with astonishment, reflect the spectacle before her. She is moved, the raw emotion in the Phantom's voice stirring within her. But despite the grandeur, the raw emotion, Christine remains conflicted. Her loyalty to Raoul, her first love, clashes with the silent affection she holds for the Phantom a heart struggle, a testament to love's complexity. In the end, the Phantom's performance serves as a reminder of love's depths. But will it tilt Christine's heart? As our story continues, we're left to ponder the question, what is the true nature of love? As we delve deeper into the tale, we bear witness to the intricate dance of emotions and human frailties. It's a story that doesn't just entertain, but deeply engages shedding light on aspects of our own lives that we often choose to ignore. The characters, drawn with such vividness, become more than just fictional constructs, but mirrors reflecting our own complexities. We see the interplay of love, a theme that has been explored in diverse ways in literature, yet always manages to throw up surprises. It's not just the romantic fairy tale love that we are familiar with, but a nuanced understanding. Love, as portrayed here, is an all-consuming fire that can warm but can also burn. It's a force that can uplift, yet also cause immense pain. Coupled with this love is the specter of obsession. The kind of obsession that makes one forget the self, blurring the boundaries between the lover and the beloved. It's a dangerous, intoxicating kind of passion that often leads to downfall yet the characters willingly embrace it, driven by an insatiable thirst for the object of their desire. Intermingled with this love and obsession is the theme of sacrifice. The characters have to constantly negotiate between their own desires and the well-being of the ones they love. They are often torn between their own happiness and the happiness of others. These sacrifices underscore the complexities of love and the difficult choices one has to make. Not just a simple narration, this tale challenges and provokes us to question our own understanding of love. It forces us to introspect and reevaluate our notions. Is love just a mere feeling or does it require certain sacrifices? Is it selfless, demanding nothing in return? Or does it too have its conditions, its limits? This tale, with its rich tapestry of emotions, makes us ponder on the multi-dimensional aspects of love. Voiceover. In the aftermath of the Phantom's actions, the Opera House is forever changed. Its once lively halls now resonate with a chilling silence, an enduring evidence of the Phantom's infatuation and dominion. 
The stage, once abuzz with activity, now lies in desolation, a cold testament to the reign of fear that once prevailed. The lives of Christine and Raoul too have been irrevocably altered by this harrowing experience. Christine, previously viewed as a rising star, now seeks solace in the solitude of the theater's quiet corners, her voice reduced to a faint echo of its previous brilliance. Raoul, in contrast, is haunted by his frantic pursuit to unmask the phantom. His prior cheerful nature has been supplanted by a deep solemnity, mirroring the inner struggles he grapples with. The Phantom, on the other hand, has a fate that remains enveloped in obscurity. Some individuals maintain that he vanished without leaving a single trace behind, while others insist that they can hear his mournful melody reverberating through the vastness of the Opera House when the night sets in. Despite the trauma, the Opera House continues to stand, now bearing the mark of a Phantom's obsession. The performers tread lightly, always of the shadow that once loomed over them. Yet, amidst the fear and the silence, music still finds its way. Tender notes spill into the silence, filling the air with a mixture of melancholy and hope. It is the echo of a past era, a reminder of a time when the opera house brimmed with life and music. As for the Phantom, his actions continue to reverberate, altering the lives of those left in his wake. His shadow, comparable to his eerie tune, persists as a somber reminder of a narrative deeply entrenched in obsession, control, and a distorted interpretation of love. The Phantom's actions leave a lasting impact, changing the lives of those involved forever. His shadow, much like his haunting melody, lingers on, a grim reminder of a tale steeped in obsession, control, and a twisted understanding of love. As we bid adieu to this enigmatic tale, we invite you to pause, reflect and engage with the lingering essence of our story. The narrative we've woven, the characters we've met, they all converge to this point, this moment of contemplation where we ask you, our esteemed audience, to ponder an age-old question. In the theater of life, we are constantly faced with decisions that define us, sculpt our character and map out the course of our existence. As our narrative unfolded, the protagonists grappled with a profound dilemma, a fundamental conflict that is as old as humankind itself. The conflict between loyalty and love. Loyalty, perhaps one of the most treasured of all. It gives us a sense of belonging, a feeling of security. It grounds us in a reality that is predictable, comfortable. To be loyal is to be steadfast. It is a commitment to stand by someone or something through thick and thin, for better or worse. And then there's love. It is the emotion that has inspired poets, philosophers, and artists for centuries. It's an intoxicating feeling that sweeps us off our feet, making our hearts beat faster. Love is a connection so profound that it transcends reality, crossing boundaries and defying logic. It's a force of nature that can make us feel invincible and vulnerable same time. So what do you do when you're torn between these two powerful forces. What do you choose when your heart is pulled in two opposite directions? There is no easy answer to this question. It's a personal journey, a voyage into the depths of your soul. And more importantly, how do you navigate this journey without losing yourself? How do you balance loyalty and love without sacrificing who you are, your values, your identity? It's a delicate dance, a tightrope walk on the edge of a sword. It's almost like trying to capture a ray of sunlight in your hands. And so, we leave you with this thought to ponder. When faced with a choice between loyalty and love, what would you choose? And more importantly, how does one make such a choice without losing oneself in the process?